All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about something that I think is very fitting, especially for the snowy season that we live in right now or winter time, and that is going to be truck survival knives. Now, previously, I did a video talking about what I think is one of the most slept on and missed truck survival knives or a knife that I think just a lot of people overlook for this application, and that is the Glock knife. And this is where we're going to start with Epic and overall really great choices, at least in my opinion, for a truck survival knife. Now, a few things before we get into the actual list of knives here. What do I think categorizes as a good truck survival knife? One of the first things I think is being a larger or at least longer in length size knife. Once again, when it comes to a truck survival knife, truck survival or vehicle survival as an overall rule is different than most other survival kits and survival applications because we're not as typically worried about portability or weight size constraints, right? We're not packing this thing in 10 miles. We're not trying to be ultralight backpackers here. We're really just trying to have equipment that we can use if a vehicle breaks down, gets stuck, gets lost, gets caught up in a blizzard something along those lines right and so if you have to hunker or if you have to hunker down or shelter in place these are going to be the types of knives that you will want so like I said what I kind of focus on is longer larger length blades and for that reason or for the purpose of being able to build feed experience field expediently um, shelters and also field expediently gather wood. Longer knives, longer blades are going to be able to do that. The next thing that is going to be a very important piece is durability. These are gonna be knives that you can use hard use and once again i think this is an interesting point to bring up because every knife has its limits obviously you can break just about any knife if you really try hard enough you know you will find the breaking point of just about any knife but realistically speaking these are not going to be you know super weak or super fragile blades they're also going to be for the most part thicker blades because once again when it comes down to more industrial applications of doing things like batoning and you know really using the knife if it's more wedged shaped as opposed to a very thin piece of steel it's going to spread apart material easier so those are kind of the baselines for me now another one that i think can be important to factor especially you know given um, some locations or locales is going to be um, the cheapness of your knife of course the reason why i love the glock knife and why it's kind of the poster child for this application is that these things regularly go for about 30 to 20 bucks they're not expensive and of course mine's a little bit so you can see a little bit jankety here because i took my dremel to it to push back that bevel because the initial bevel on most of these Glock field knives is pretty shallow or pretty abrupt. So you have a thin um, bevel that doesn't really lead to a cutting edge that is super um, like good for actually cutting. So once again, for the actual bayonet purposes of a Glock knife, that doesn't matter as much, but if you're actually using this as a knife, you'll probably want to extend the bevel, make it a little bit more useful for actual cutting tasks and purposes. Now, the next one up is going to be one that can be equally as cheap as the Glock knife, and I think one that might be a little bit superior, and that is going to be the Cold Steel SRK. Now, of course, for those who are uninitiated, this is my SRK and CPM 3 V. So for this, we're going to just talk about the Cold Steel SRK because you can get these in SK5 high carbon for around $35. And so for that price point, for the budget version of the SRK, you are getting a lot of value. Now, like I said, this one is the 3V version. So this one is a fair bit more expensive than the SK5 version, though even this one, in my opinion, is probably one of the best value buys because I was able to get mine um, for $99. So under $100 CPM 3V on a cold steel SRK. And, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of bro dudes in the comment section below. And uh, in previous videos, they like to come into the comments and they're like, oh, you know, I broke my cold steel SRK within five minutes of using it. And personally, if you guys don't believe me, one of my most watched videos on this channel is me comparing the cold steel SRK to the um, 
what is it, Gerber strong arm. And in that video, you know, batoning, feather sticking, like actually doing things. So uh, not only do I have a video of the Cold Steel SRK versus the strong arm, I have also put my Cold Steel SRK, my SK5 version that I used to have up against a whole plethora of different survival knives. Hard used it and I can tell you at least rest assured with all the SRKs I've had and I've had an SRKC, an SRK, an SK5 and now an SRK and 3V. None of my SRKs have had any issues doing any kind of field work so um, I, like I can say with a reasonably educated statement that uh, I rest assured like obviously once again every Every knife has their upper limit, but the SRK is completely fine and more than adequate for most field survival um, applications. All right, next one up is going to be the, a little bit of an unorthodox pick here, and this is the um, Mora Pathfinder. Now, the Mora Pathfinder is a w little bit of a weird knife, but I thought it would be a really solid option to throw on here because, once again, reasonably tough. This is not going to be the most tough knife ever built, but it's going to to reasonably be able to do any kind of field processing tasks that you're going to need to do and it's still right around $60. Of course it has a very large blade. It has the handle of the Mora Bushcraft Black so that Mora Bushcraft Black series of knives is pretty comfortable overall. Not my absolute favorite to baton with because of this little uh, spur right here that kind of forms the forward finger guard here. Um, so if you're not careful how you hold this when you baton this little guy can sting you but once again this knife and my more bushcraft black were more than durable for reasonable wilderness tasks. I batoned both of them, processed game animals with the Bushcraft Black, but the Pathfinder is a little bit better, in my opinion, for a truck survival knife because this has a 6.7 inch blade length, whereas the typical Mora Bushcraft Black is more around like a four inch blade length. So it's gonna be a little bit more of a, you know, kind of small game or kind of smaller task processor. So, you know, keep it in mind, but the Pathfinder is pretty cool. Like I said, the Bushcraft black handle is comfortable enough and super super grippy this is another thing that i kind of forgot to mention when i went down the list of um, kind of qualifiers for really solid knives for this application and that is that overall like you're going to see some other full tang knives here that have exposed tangs but by and large some of my favorite options are things like the srk and the pathfinder where you have fully rubberized grips with no metal exposed because one thing and this is literally my truck survival knife just pulled out of my truck and because it has a fully exposed handle here once again I can't really tell or I can't really show you guys but this is a you know ice cold handle right because this is, was in sub-zero or below freezing applications and I just pulled it out or pulled it in from outside this knife is ice cold right so if you're having to do anything in a cold soaked vehicle and you know let me actually get this uh, survival knife out. Um, so if you have to do anything in a cold soaked vehicle, you will know very quickly that, you know, your handle is absolutely frigid. Like this thing is very cold. And granted the micarta isn't as cold, but because your hand has to wrap around the whole of that knife handle, this is going to be, everything here is going to be ice cold. So just keep that in mind when you think about full tang knives, like these have exposed full tangs because when it comes down to, you know, like actually use in sub-zero freezing, you know, below freezing conditions, um, they will be very frosty. So we're gonna get into some other options here, but just keep that in mind when it comes to it. This type of handle where it's fully rubberized is not only gonna offer more traction than, you know, full tang knife, but also, uh, or exposed full tang knife, but also it's going to be far more temperature neutral. So if you have to handle a knife with bare hands or even with gloves, it is not going to be stealing or leaching heat from your hand. So I do have a preference for that. And those are the reasons why the Mora Pathfinder is on this list. A lot of people probably looked at this knife and been like, wow, it's weird, it's dorky. And it is kind of weird seeing a, a more that is this large and this wide but it really does work quite well and once again for a around $60 priced range once again an under $100 knife you're getting a lot of value for what you're getting in a lot of performance once again a 6.7 inch blade is even longer than the cold steel srk for blade length so keep that in mind 
All right, now we're gonna get into the exposed tang knives. Now, once again, I don't have a high preference for these knives in the winter or in below freezing conditions, but once again, you know, there are summer months as well. So I tend to lean towards these truck survival knives more in the summer or in warm uh, climates. So the first one up is the Bark River Knives Cub. This is, like I said, the Cub, and I, this is on the shorter end of the scale, a little bit, you know, smaller in blade length than I would prefer. This is around a five and a half inch blade length, but is still totally fieldable. And um, because of what this knife is, you know, still reasonably thick, CPM 3V steel, and uh, a good convex grind on it, I would totally feel, like I said, I, I say it's a little bit on the smaller end, and it is but I still would feel totally confident in this being a good solid truck survival knife, um, especially because it has a very comfortable handle, a handle you can kind of choke back on. It has a very large um, swell towards the end of the handle. You can kind of choke back to and get a very firm grip if you need to do some light chopping. Now I do say light chopping because once again, um, it's not a terribly heavy knife and once again, it's a knife. So for me, I'm not gonna be going around like trying to chop down a tree with a knife. If I'm going to take down a tree with any of these knives, I'm gonna be batoning the the knife blade through the, the tree to fell it. That's gonna be the most efficient and economical way to drop a tree with a knife just as a whole. So anyways, moving on to the next um, survival knife. This is going to be the ZT-006, or and this is kind of their military, almost like a an M9 bayonet but like a spiritual successor to it. Honestly, for me though, personally, it reminds me more of like a Halo knife, like a Halo, the video game franchise. This reminds me of something like a UNSC soldier would carry personally more than anything, just because of like how brickish this handle is. And to be fair, the handle, you know, I think a lot of people look at this knife and they're like, man, this thing must be super uncomfortable. And it does have a stick kind of handle, but it actually is not that uncomfortable. And one thing that is nice is unlike most bayonet and military style, knives this has a very shortened guard so it's not my favorite to have a cross guard like this but it is just as a note you can still you know really easily access and reach that top uh, jimping on this guy. Now this one, similar to the Cub, is also made out of CPM 3V, but what I do like about this knife over a lot of the other knives uh, or exposed full tanks here on this kind of lineup is that it has a very long flat grind and so this is probably one of the more slicey knives of this list so that's why i like to have different options is that you know like is this as durable as the cub and some of the other you know options we're going to mention in the future and you know the srk and stuff totally i have no doubts in the durability of this i haven't gotten out to fully hard test it yet but do i have any doubts in its abilities absolutely not but um but the nice thing about it is having that higher grind, having that wider blade gives you a lot more ability to create things like feather sticks with ease. And once again, as I've mentioned in the video or in videos before, and as I've shown in, or showcased in testing, because this knife has a flat grind as opposed to something like a convex grind, you kind of give up some of that, you know, extra thickness in the grind that's going to be, you know, split, uh, splitting things better. But you, what you're going to be getting is easier and more reliable, repeatable um, things like feather sticking. So when you're really just trying to bang out, um, you know, carving or like I said, feather sticking on the fly, you're going to be able to do it with a wide thin, nicely tapered flat grind, far easier, at least in my experience, than a convex grind. Now, of course, training can definitely influence this outcome, but by and large, this is that's just the way it's gonna be. All right, next one up is the Survive Knives GSO 5.1. Now, for me, I chose the GSO 5.1. There are larger Survive Knives out there, and certainly if you wanted the 7.7 .7 or you know a larger one, it would probably work as well. But for me, um, it, once again, I am a personal fan of having forward finger choils, but the reason I chose the 5.1 is because there's 5.1 inches of cutting edge. So the actual like bevel itself is 5.1 inches, but actual like blade length here is closer to six inches. So it still totally fits within at least my desired goals of having, you know, over five and a half inches of total usable blade. Because when you're going to baton with this, you will have to start your baton with your actual cutting edge. But if you've ever batoned before, you 
you know that once you split that wood, once you have the split going down the wood, you can very easily tap this, the rest of this blade length, the rest of this blade stock here into the wood and it will compound your splitting abilities or at least the you know reach that you have when you're batoning a piece of wood. So once again, it's one of those things where you know the actual blade length itself is a little bit shorter than I would like. Once again, you know, like the cub has a longer blade length, even though the cub is a physically shorter knife, this cub has more cutting edge than this GSO, but, or the GSO 5.1, but this does still have enough blade length as a whole to make it usable in that regard. So in my opinion, it still does work um, optimally and for what I would want in this knife. Now, this guy is by no means a light guy. This is pretty darn hefty. And once again, is a pretty large knife. Like when you put it up against, once again, the cub, you know, has a longer cutting edge, but you know, when you look at blade length to blade length, blade width to blade width, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty crazy. So there's the cutting edge to cutting edge. You can see that the uh, cub definitely has a little bit more cutting edge. There we go. Um, but the actual like length to length, the GSO dwarfs it. So it's still an admirable survival knife. And in my opinion, if you can find a survive GSO 5.1, like I said, in my opinion, I think it's probably about the, the sweet spot for a survival knife from them. All right, rounding it off, finally, last but certainly not least, and I saved this one for last because I know that I talk about this knife a lot on the channel and so people get tired of seeing this knife. And once again, it's also cold, so I've been giving it some time to warm up because I literally just pulled it out of the truck. But of course, this is none other than the seven inch version of the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. Once again, it's been on the channel forever. You guys who've been around will know this knife. I've modified it a little bit to make it more conducive to my survival applications but this is just a knife that um, I think is really strikes every or really strikes every tick on the box for being a great survival knife and mine of course has a few little nicks and dings in it and of course you know people say like oh you never use your knives and stuff I don't know I try to show the use on these things it doesn't tend to come up as well in the camera but rest assured if you guys have once been once again been around the channel I've done plenty of videos field testing a lot of these knives including the CRK Pacific and putting it up against other survival knives but there's not much more I can say about the Chris Reeve knives Pacific it's a great knife. This is its current setup as a truck survival knife. Have a ferro rod, have a Leatherman Surge here, which is also very frosty. <laughs> um, but this is its current setup as a, you know, survival knife or truck survival knife. So that is seven different truck survival knives um, that I think are really good additions to anyone's vehicle loadout. And they're all what I would consider, you know, once again, not necessarily the lightest, not necessarily, um, you know, the most field carryable knives, but they're going to be able to do the job of, you know, field expediently building shelters and starting fires very quickly. And they're going to assist in that role and goal. And so, I think that that's what makes them really good um, candidates for this choice and also too, um, they're just hard to go wrong with. And hopefully, yeah, like I tried to go over a good price spectrum here, things like the Survive GSO, um, things like the ZT and the Pacific are going to be more high end. You know, we're talking 250 plus dollars for them. The Cub is around 200, but also, you know, the SRK, the Glock, the Mora are all going to be sub hundred dollar knives. So there's really no excuse not to have at least some flavor of a truck survival knife here. Even if you can't shell out, you know, $400 on a Chris Reeve knives Pacific, um, you, you know, that's not necessarily an expectation, but it is, uh, in option but there's like i said tons of options in different price ranges so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video as always god bless